going to start now, right? So Aloha Chick, if you'd be so kind to start your video so I can spotlight you, that would be dynamite. And now you can see her face. Oh, yep. I did the spotlight. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So you are up, Aloha Chick. You're the first one up, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how okay. this works, because you're new at this, so every time um, an audience member is done playing, you clap, you know, like applause um, for people coming in. That's how this works. We want to show up support, so clap every time someone's done playing. Gives a more human element to the performance. That's why I do it on here, so we can okay. do that. Just to encouragement. Anyway, you're up. Okay, so I'm going to sing a song that my dad taught me a long time ago, which is a country song, Silver Wings. Silver wings Shining on a sunlight Warren and Jess. Sorry about that. Warren and Jess. Headed somewhere in flight. They're taking you away. And leaving me alone. Silver wings slowly fading out of sight. Don't leave me, I cry. Don't take that airplane ride. But you lock me out of your mind. You left me standing. Silver wings shining in the sunlight, warring engines is somewhere in flight. They're taking you away. And leaving me lonely, silver wings slowly fading out of sight. So there you go. That was very good. That was very good. The audio was not cutting out. That was perfect. Awesome. Very good. How long have you been singing for? I've been singing ever since I was like 10. Till like today and I sing in church choirs, but like I was messaging you earlier, I came down with a little cold. My heart is. Right, right. Um, that's very interesting. Ian, you're up. Ian Bamberger, you're up. I'm gonna say last names because there's two in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Bamberger, thank you. You said it correctly. Um, so before I get started, is that coming through, like my voice and the guitar? Perfect. Absolutely perfect from last week. Awesome. Cool. So um, this week, I'm going to play a song called uh, When Love Came to Town. I don't think I've played it for you guys yet. Um, wrote it during quarantine. And it's going to start off with a little instrumental. That's how, that's how it was created. And I hope you guys enjoy it.
I was young a long time ago I was naive I made promises I couldn't keep until I met you you dragged me from the blue until I met you there was nothing I can do <laughs> then love came to town it was love I was feeling all around Love came to town Oh, yes it did And I could feel it all around Two hearts beat as one Sunny day I found a treasure in the sky. I look at you with that fire in your eyes. Darling, you saved me. You saved me from myself. Oh, you saved me when there was nobody else. <laughs> then love came to town. It was love I was feeling all around. Love Oh, yes, it did. And I could feel it all around. Two hearts beat as one. Signs written in the stars oh how could i forget forget who we are now i have you have you in my heart oh i have you i could do you no harm because love in a town it was love i was feeling all around love It's a brand new tune. I always love your music, man. It's so good. It's so inspirational. Thank you. Great. I just want to dance when I hear it, you know? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, That's that's Love Came to Town. I just wrote that and, you know, I just, I'm testing it out, you know. Uh, at open mics and stuff, so I'm glad you guys like it. That's cool. Oh yeah, that you were playing some straight bars, man, straight bars. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Sam. Awesome. I'm glad you guys liked it. All right, Ian, you're up, brother. The other Ian. Uh, how y'all doing? Um, I was just here last week doing my thing. Um, I remember I said that I do interviews. Um, I run a, I um, am the admin on Facebook for a community called Bass Players Global Alliance. And um, we work with um, artists from all over. One of, as I said, one of the most known people that I've worked with is um, Kern Brantley, who is my friend who lives here in Michigan, who has played for Beyonce and a bunch of other people. And um, another one of my friends, her name is um, Zuri Applebay. She, so y'all feel free to look her up too. She, um, she's worked with, I know Nick Jonas and a lot of other people. So, and my, my boy um, Ian over here, me and him are gonna be doing an interview like next month. And our guy, boy Tom, who was here like last week, I just did one with him almost a few hours ago. So, so I'm gonna put that link in the description. Also, I released a, um, a brand new single last week called Lessons on my YouTube channel. And the rest of the album is coming out pretty soon. And I always know that when I have like music coming out, I always like to wear an outfit that like best represents it. Also because it's on the album cover. So I figured why not? And yeah, this coming through all right.
It's actually dying. I mean, it's fine when you start playing, but then it started to drown out. Still good there, Wood. Just came back. Perfect. You speak beautiful things about my beginnings, humble beginnings, and my ending never ending. Eternity within me, I will abide in your words. Most beautiful I ever heard. And since you believe in me, I become everything you say about me. I've decided to bring you all I am I've ever heard, I've ever known And I have decided to bring you everything I think I am, I think I am I have decided to believe Because you said believe And whatever you say that's what I will be, yeah. Whatever you say, that's what I will do. That's what I will do, and I will prove that whatever you say, that's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Let your presence fill this place and give us a feeling that I can't deny I serve. Father, let your fire rain and burn away all that is not like you. I live your wire and give you everything that you deserve for you are worthy. Serving and I give you all of me. I will not keep anything from you. Now open up the heavens over us. And let us receive your great love. That surpasses all understanding. Yeah. And we will not be silent. We you are. Open up, living waters washing over us, knowing that you're watching over us. Sorrows covered by your reckless love. You took my shame, you took the blame, you took the hate, took the guilt, you took the pain, you changed my fate. In your hands, I stole your back up on the cross, you took my place, so now I scream and say that it's your love. You love that in my life, your hope, and that keeps me alive, I trust. And you're not on my own understanding. Peace, for what you've given me, your truth, so that I can see the faithfulness that you show. Open up the heavens over us and let us receive your great love. Send your peace that surpasses all understanding. Silent.
I always love your songs, man. That's so beautiful. Just, all right, just so my boy doesn't get sued for a copyright disclaim, that first song I did was a cover. It's called Whatever You Say by Lacey Sturm. And that second one, Open Up, that was by me. That was off my second album I released last year called Exodus. All right, I appreciate that. I don't cool. want to get a copyright strike. <laughs> all right. No one so you, don't, so you don't get a copyright from me. No, I'm just kidding. You're, you're, you're my friend, so, so I'll let you up. Yeah, brother. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So while I'm talking, if you guys are all musicians, you guys want to link up, I encourage you guys to, in the chat box, just post your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube, whatever you guys want, wherever you post your artwork. I want everybody to be supporting one another. You know, support it there. Put your links there so people can find you and follow you. And that's what it's all about. Supporting one another, helping each other out. All right, Rod, you're up, brother. How do you make how do you make your video bigger? How to make my video bigger? I mean, how can I make my video bigger? It's just a little square rectangular box. How do I get it in the whole box? Oh, oh, well, that's because I'm spotlighting everybody. Um, so when I'm doing that, it kind of shrinks so then everybody can be like in a group. You know, if that makes sense, if it was just you and me, it'd be a bigger thing, but because there's well, more people in at the same time, everybody else is big, except for me. I'm the only one that's got. The oh, little oh, go to your, go to your view window. I didn't even see that at the top, go to your view window. And then you should at, see at, at the top. Yeah. At the top. It's a, it looks like a, one of those things that says marker, you know, one of those things you go up there and then there'll be a thing that says full screen gallery. And then. You can change the view. It sh you should see it at the top corner on the right. It says switch camera and switch the speaker. It's a, if it's your phone, it's not going to work. You have to turn it on its side. Are you using a phone, Rod? I'm in. I'm on an iPad. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. I don't know. I mean, it's what happens there I you go. That? There you go, Rod. You got okay, it, man. That's okay, better. On, that's better. Okay, hang on. All right. Perfect. Okay, hang on. Sorry about that. Shoot. It's all right. You know, we're all learning. It's all good. Okay, so that's that's better. All right, give me, tell me if you can hear this. Can you hear the chimes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, good. All right, well, I'm going to do... A song by uh, White Snake. It's called "Is This Love?" Back in the eighties. Yes. I usually have a mic, but I didn't set that up tonight, so I'm gonna wing it. So I'll try and get close so you can hear me sing. <laughs> I'm 
Right on, Rod. Hell yeah. Man, that song is awesome. Like, I love that song. I was singing along a little bit long there. Um, yeah. Man, I like how you did that, but you made it your own, man. Like, you made you changed the tune a little bit, so you made it your yeah. own. Yeah. great. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's a good song. You added your own feel to it, which is great. I like when people cover songs, but they make it their own, you know? That's awesome. Thanks. I appreciate that. No problem, brother. Yep. Yeah. No so I'll just give you a little uh, sample of what I've been working on uh, recently. I've been working on a Prince song, Purple Rain, something like this. I 
need a lighter, man. I need to go like a lighter like this. Yeah. Bravo, bravo, that was wonderful. All right, Sam, you are up, brother. Um, uh, what do you want me to do? <laughs> um, you could read a story, you could do one of your narratives, you know, like pull up one of your stories. Oh, it's an open mic, so yeah, do, do oh. it. Do what um, we did together, you know, when I gave you that sample. We could do that. Oh, that was oh, great. Okay. Um, <laughs> you all want to hear a spooky story then? You do? Sure. Sure. And use a little reverb if possible, it adds effect. <laughs> trying to make a good horror personality <laughs> so let me see if i can pull up one of my uh pull up a short one that i did
Okay, so um, I made this before I got in. So for everyone's knowledge, I write creepy pastas as what they're called. You know, horror stories that you post for the internet. And I kind of got started during this whole lockdown thing. And I kind of started with this short story that I call Sleep. And here it is. <clears throat> First, can everyone hear me okay? We're good? Okay. He awoke to hear the sound of his wife screaming from the bedroom door. The sound of her horror-filled wail had been enough to rouse him out of a deep sleep. He did night shifts, so when his wife went to work was the time that he slept. Today, however, was different. He roused to see her wide-eyed and screaming in the direction of the mattress. He was puzzled by her reaction. Was she screaming at him? Honey, what's wrong? He asked his distracted wife, his distressed wife. She gave no response. She gave no response other than hyperventilating and bursting into tears. He got out of bed to comfort his distressed wife and find the cause of the upset. Her gaze never met him as he got out of bed, always staying on the mattress. He asked her again what was bothering her, and still she gave no reply, no matter how loudly he spoke. He reached for her shoulder to shake her gently to get any response. Something was wrong. He didn't feel the sensation of his wife's body as he touched her shoulder. He kept trying, but still could not feel her there, as if she were an illusion. What's going on, he thought. Her eyes were still glued to the bed on the far side of the room. He turned to see the gruesome sight that she had witnessed after entering the room. The sight caused him to freeze in place. The sheets were wet and stained with the man's blood as his corpse lay still, lifeless on the bed, his eyes staring at the ceiling and gaping mouth drawn in an agonizing scream. He walked closer to the sight of his corpse. This couldn't be happening, he thought. Upon closer inspection, he found deep wounds in his chest. He bled to death from how deep that they were. He looked to the floor. There, there were drops of his own blood on the floor. In fact, there was a trail of his blood leading to the open window. Wow, I like it. That's pretty good, dude. That was good. Really? That was awesome, yeah. That I, was I, actually my first attempt at uh, great, writing it. That was great. I really felt the terror that that character was feeling, you know? Yeah, I know my narration voice needs to get a little, needs a little work, but I did practice once this week. It's really good, man. Really good. All you need to do is just to like add a little bit of reverb underneath it, you know, and really. You're... I think what I, I think really what happy. I need is a goddamn microphone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to that time, man, I can help you pick stuff out because I know the best stuff. Yeah, I'm, I know you do. I know you do. Oh, yeah. But you know what? Since I can do this, I can actually give you guys something much better next week. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it, man. <laughs> Perfect evil laugh. Perfect. Oh, that laugh is so good. Really? So dead on, man. <laughs> so dead on. Uh. You sound like the guy at the end of the Thriller song, you know. That's what I just said. Vincent Price. Vincent, yeah, Vincent Price, yeah. I know. I got to I gotta mold myself after him. That's awesome. That's, mm. I respect that. I respect that. It's awesome. All right, Aloha Chick, you're up again. Okay, I'm going to be doing a Hawaiian song. Which is you guys probably know, which is um, Silver Rainbow. Which, whoever is not me, I'm actually performing for the SF of Idol, and they told me to sing this song. So hopefully it'll go through. 
I don't know what happened, guys, but um, let's just move to the next performer. Ian Bamberger, you're up. Uh, do, do we want to give her a, a shot? Can you, do we, want, we can. We yeah. can. We can. Um, I'll yeah. ask her if she's all right. She's, she's, yeah. Or just message awesome. her privately awesome. and see what she says. All right. Well, I, I can continue. Um, just don't want to cut off her time. Um, okay. Oh, I got you. I got you. I just don't want to keep the, you know, yeah. stop the ball. Keep the cool. momentum going. Um, all right. I got another one for you. Not really. Okay. What is she, what happened? Is she, does she want to finish her song? Let me ask her. Okay, I asked her, let's see what she says. Tell you after. Okay. I'm asking if she's done performing for tonight. No, okay. All right, Ian, you can go. Bamberger, you go. All right, so I'm going to play um, uh, a new song called Might As Well Try. It's like a pop rock song. And, you know, it's just that feeling when you don't want to do anything, you're feeling down, might as well try. Sounds cliche, but, you know, it's got a cool little hook. And I'm going to play uh, an instrumental beforehand to try to get us moving here. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hear that harmony? the sun 
as well try is that from your new album man that was awesome oh, thank you dude this is just a new song like i'm releasing trying to release a song every month i gotta save enough money to hit the studio get it done get it out uh, but it's part of a new project um yeah glad you like it i could definitely help you out there man if you're having you know money troubles i can do it for a discount and uh, help you out too. Well, let's talk about it let's talk about it. i use distro kids so I've been doing that with myself. I'm using Distro Kid for my next release. Yeah. If you guys are interested, yep. Distro Kid is yes. the best. Yes. It's so much better than CD Baby. And it's it's a lump sum for one year. Release as many tracks as you want. It's like such a no brainer, man. I was going to use CD yeah. Baby. And I was like, $20 for your subscription, unlimited songs. No, no brainer. brainer. That's that's the window no right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my pre save, uh, if you check out the Rhythm Lines thread, my pre save link is in there. So you guys can pre-save my upcoming single but uh thank you guys for listening to the tunes i can't wait to hear ian up next thank you all right the other ian you're up Yo, yo, yo. Just out of curiosity, how many Skillet fans do we have in here? All right, one. All right, good enough. <laughs> All right, I'll, I count as two. This is called Never Surrender by Skillet. Scared to see yourself. Do you know what it's like when? 
I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. Okay, so that was like kind of like a mix of three songs. The second two were um, Promise Keeper by Israel Houghton and Do It Again by Elevation Worship. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Loved it. All right, Rod, you are up, brother. Can you hear me now? Okay, so we're gonna go back to the, I think it was done in the 70s. We're gonna go back and do a Led Zeppelin song, The Stairway to Heaven. Well, there's a lady in the show, all the glitters is gold, and she's buying the stairway when she gets there, she knows if the stores are all closed. With a word, she can't get what she came here for. Ooh, 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 ooh. When she buys the stairway delivered. Oh, there's a sign on the wall, and she wants to be sure. But she knows sometimes what's that to me. Oh, there's a tree by the road, and the song that you see. Sometimes all the thoughts Oh, 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 oh,
can't go into the other part because you need a full band to do the rest of it because it's too fast. Understandable. That was brilliant, though, man. I really like that. That it sounded like you. You know, you took that song, but you weren't trying to copy Led Zeppelin sound. It sounded like you, which is great. Excellent. Yeah, that's what I do. I I take the originals. I learn the originals, and then I put my like twist on it. That's good. You know that that's 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 true musicianship. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not trying to sound just like them. You're not trying to be you know a copycat. You're trying to sound like yourself, which I think is awesome. I really like that. I mean, the, all the progressions are the same, you know, as far as the chords and all that stuff. Yeah, but it's just yet. that, I, you know, I put my little twist on it and, and do it. Yeah, it's the best way to do it. Anyway, Sam, you're up again, man. Let's hear some more horror stories. And then we'll do the encore. Turn it random off? Draw. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to get a little ambience in here first. Nah, this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to work. Uh, can you switch it back on? Huh? I forgot my flashlight faces the wrong way. Okay. So this one is actually a classic in uh, the world of creepy pastas. It's called no, I... the Russian... <laughs> it's called the Russian Sleep Experiment. I didn't... Russian researchers back in the 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas wouldn't kill them since it was toxic and high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras so they only had microphones and five inch thick glass porthole sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on, but no bedding, running water and a toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. Test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine, was, everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained, having been promised, falsely, that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their conversations and activities were monitored and it was noticed that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past. And the general tone of their conversations took, a, took on a darker aspect after the four day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering to the microphones and one-way mirror portholes. Oddly, they all think they could win the, trust, win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them. At first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. The researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather, didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the two captives started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering into the microphones. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working since they thought it impossible that no sound could be coming with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy, very heavy level of strenuous exercise. On the morning of the 14th day, 
the researchers did something they said they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke a response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice response, we no longer want to be freed. Debate broke out among the researchers and military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more responses using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with the fresh air and immediately voices from the microphones began to object. Three different voices began begging as if pleading for the life of loved ones to turn the, to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened and soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive although no one could rightly call the state of any of them in life. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. There were chunks of meat from the, des from the dead test subjects, thighs and chest, and stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All four surviving test subjects also had large portions of their muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth as the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. The abdominal organs below the rib cage of all four test subjects had been removed. While the heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place, the skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the rib cage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact, and, organ and they had just been taken out and laid on the floor, fanning out the eviscerated but still living bodies of the test subjects. The digestive tract of all four could be seen to be working, digesting food. It quickly became apparent that, they were that what they were digesting was their own flesh that they had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, but still many refused to return to the chamber. To remove the test subjects, they continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternately begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on unless they fell asleep. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off and an artery in his legs severed by one of the subject's teeth. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives, if you count the ones that committed suicide in the weeks following the incident. In the struggle, one of the four living subjects had had his spleen ruptured and he bled out almost immediately. The medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of a morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and arm of one doctor. When Hart was seen to beat a full two minutes after, he had bled out to the point where there was more air in his vascular system than blood. Even after it stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach, and just repeating the word more over and over and weaker and weaker until he finally fell silent. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility the two with intact vocal cords continuously begging for the gas and demand to be, demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had, 
in the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedative they had given him to prepare him for surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints when the anesthetic gas was brought out and put to put him under. He managed to tear most of his way through a four inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even though the weight of a 200 pound soldier was holding that wrist as well. It only took a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, and in the instant the eyelids fluttered and closed, his heart stopped. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had tripled the normal level of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he had broken nine bones in his struggle not to be subdued. Most of them were from the force his own muscles had exerted on them. The second survivor had been the first of the group to start screaming. His vocal cords were destroyed. <laughs> he was unable to beg or object to surgery and only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head yes when someone suggested, reluctantly, they try surgery without the, the anesthetic and did not react for the entire six-hour procedure in replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. The surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should be medically possible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse asserts... Uh. Oops. All right, uh, my story was cut off. One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. When the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while struggling. Assuming that this must be something of drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple. Keep cutting. The other two subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well, although they had to be injected with a paralytic for the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researchers with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why had they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given. I must remain awake. All three test subjects' restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers, fearing the wrath of their military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their projected considered project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer, a former KGB agent, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected, but were overruled. In preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the subjects were, kept, were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that this, at this point, all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all his might. First left, then right, then left again for something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly. Having been the first to be wired for EEG, most of the researchers were monitoring his brain waves in surprise. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatline inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering from brain death before returning to normal. 
as they focused on paper scrolling out the brainwaves monitor. Only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to that of a deep sleep, then flatlined for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed now. His brainwaves showed the same flatlining as the one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects inside, as well as three researchers. One of the named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes and then turned, on the mute, turned his gun to the mute subject and blew his brains out as well. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to a bed as the remaining members of the medical team, research team fled the room. I won't be locked in here with these things, not with you, he screamed at the man strapped to the table. What are you, he demanded. I must know. The subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily, the subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal minds. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to that nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the, as the subject weakly choked out. So nearly free. Good job, dude. That was awesome. Wow. Oh, That's quite sorry. a story, bro. <laughs> oh, I wow. know. That was wow. wow. That's a famous chill. creepypasta. Yeah, that is like one of the most well-knowns. Yeah. That was, that was wow. <sighs> okay, now for the encore. Let me do this. Since Rod is not here, he's going to be not chosen, of course. Okay, so Aloha Chick, you get number one. Ian, you get number two. Ian Tubbs, you get number two, Uncle number two. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. I'm just going through a lot, so my apologies. So I'm doing a better one. It's a country one, by the way, you guys. If you're in the country a little bit, I'm singing old school. <laughs> so lonesome, lonesome for you. Why can't you be blue over me? Blue. Oh, so, so, so for you. Tears fill my eyes till I can see. It's three o'clock in the morning. Here am I. Sitting here so lonely. So lonely I could cry. Blue. So lonesome, lonesome for you. Why can't you be blue over me? Now it's like, you know, instrumental part. Now that I realize it's over, I realize those weak you whisper were nothing but lies. The lonesome, lonesome party. Why can't you be blue over me? Blue. 
Why can't you be blue over me? Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. All right, Ian, top drop, brother. Okay, I'm still trying to recover from that creepy pasta stuff, dude. Like, honestly, <laughs> he's quite he's quite a character. He's a good he's a good guy, though. Yeah, absolutely, I believe. So, I want to um kind of take a trip back to 2018, right now, when I released my first album, No More Chains. This is a song that I did called um Think About It. And um, yeah, and basically it's um, <clears throat> ah, got it. Yeah. So most of this world's gonna, so most of this world is gonna judge what they don't comprehend. They're gonna hate and fear the things that they don't understand. They get confused if everybody's not the same. Like if you ain't living how they live in, then you a lame, right? Like it's like they all been running in the same circles, all running the same race and jumping the same hurdles. And if somebody runs out of line, then that person's the outcast. While really looking to see like who can outlast. We're always so concerned about trying to fit in, like, am I good enough at all or do I fit in? But why are you trying to be like everybody else? Be yourself, be your own man or woman, don't be a follower. But why are you trying to be the same as all the others? Nothing special about that just makes you another. Not throwing shade at nobody, just saying be better. Don't be a follower, learn to be a trendsetter. Now off to the high schoolers who claim that y'all be gang banging. Do y'all even know what that's about or do you just say it? Like you out here with a strap or a knife out, question. Do you even know what it is that you're fighting about? Or do you just target anybody on the gram who's out here mentioned your name and is talking bad? You get upset when people say stuff about you, but this is life. Everybody's gonna talk about you. So learn to walk away when they are like an immature. Bro, you ever thought that maybe all those guys are insecure? Don't like themselves, bro. They probably jealous of you because you specially and creative, bro. They gotta be better than you. Now hold up, ladies, don't think that you gotta post out. Be on the gram half naked trying to show out. To have a man see you as beautiful. Show him your mind because you are way off from the usual. And if a man only ever did you down for the sex of the news, and obviously he's just playing with you. So realize that you are more than a face and some curves. You are a queen, so a king is what you deserve. Now black race, white race, bro, who really cares? We all bleed the same blood and breathe the same air. Bro, racism is so stupid. Stop seeing each other as colors, man. Why can't we just be brothers and sisters, man? We all live under the same sky, but yet we've all been led to believe the same lie. That one race is more dominant than the rest. Equality is not a competition, bro. Stop trying to be the best. So black, white, Hispanic, Arabic, Asian, doesn't matter. I love you all. We're one nation. I said I love you all because we one nation. I said I love you all because we one nation. That was deep. That was amazing. I love that, man. I, that was poetry, right? It, it was, it, it had a beat to it, but I didn't bring that. It's funny because I wrote that whole song in a day. I mean, what? Wow. Yes. <laughs> well, really part, well, I wrote part of it before, but yeah, wow. then everything else. The, the story behind that is kind of like, you know, oh, wait, the album is dropping in a couple of days. I got to finish this song right now. And then I'm literally just sitting in this room for probably an hour just like okay this is an issue i gotta talk about this oh this is an issue too let me let me get on this oh this too yeah basically like that i that message man is so powerful i agree with you you know we are all one and we all need to treat each other as such like that is very true the message of that song is very accurate thank you all glory be to god you know amen I mean? amen yes absolutely 